What is happening, everybody? James Hancock here. I'm back to review the season one premiere of Perry Mason on HBO, a new show created by writers Rollin Jones and Ron Fitzgerald. But they did not create the character of Perry Mason because he's been around nearly 100 years. When it comes to pop culture, he's one of the most famous criminal defense lawyers imaginable. But I must admit, I've had no prior exposure to the character in any way, shape, or form. But I did a little digging. And after he was created by writer Earl Stanley Gardner, he appeared in over 80 novels and short stories which then led to a long-running radio series, as well as a massive hit on CBS between 1957 and 1966. Then there was a second show in the 70s, as well as a third show from the mid-80s to the mid-90s. And apparently these books rank among the top-selling book series of all time. And as somebody who loves pop culture history, I would love nothing more than to be able to sit down and do a proper compare and contrast between all the various iterations in this latest iteration on HBO, but that is beyond my ability, sadly. But this latest version stars Matthew Reese, who most people will recognize from The Americans. But the original plan for the show back in 2016 was to have Robert Downey Jr. play the part and to have it be written by Nick Pizzolatto, the writer who created True Detective. And that might have been a very different show in style and tone. But I would say this first episode was very solid, very watchable, but not instantly addictive. Not one of those obvious home runs where you see one episode and you think to yourself, well, no matter where they go, I'm going to follow them. I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to watch the first three episodes very carefully. And if they grab me, I'll stick through to the end of the eight episode miniseries because the talent involved in this show has been so reliable and so consistent in the past. The first three episodes are directed by Tim Van Patten, who's one of the biggest veterans in TV imaginable. He's directed tons of episodes of The Sopranos, Boardwalk Empire, Game of Thrones. And the writers, Rollin Jones and Ron Fitzgerald, they made a big name for themselves with the show Weeds as well as Friday Night Lights. So when you got that much storytelling power going on behind the scenes, I imagine and at a minimum, this show is going to be really good or perhaps even great. But this new show is set right on the eve of 1932 in this version of Perry Mason. He's a very haunted figure. He's really suffering from all of his experiences during World War I. He's a heavy boozer. He's barely making ends meet. In any case, if you're a fan of crime stories, if you're a fan of period crime stories, if you're a fan of old school Hollywood, I think there's a lot about the show that will appeal to people. And my understanding is that this first season is all about Perry Mason slowly but surely turning into this dynamite criminal defense lawyer by the end of the season. So it's kind of serving as an origin story across the board. But my understanding is that a lot of the characters that we've seen so far are regular recurring characters from the original show and books as well. So I'll be really curious to hear what the diehard fans of the character who really know this character well, what they think of the show. But all I can do is review this particular episode. So if you don't want any spoilers, bail out now. So first and foremost, the cast is in fine form. I'm a big fan of Matthew Reeves from The Americans. He has this incredible brooding intensity that's perfect for the character as depicted in this show. But we have the great John Lithgow playing the lawyer E.B. for whom Perry Mason works. And we've also got an actress that I've never seen before, Juliet Rylance, who's playing Della Street. And my understanding is that Della Street is one of the major characters of the original show and novels as well. And as a team, they hurl themselves into various cases and crimes, etc. And so far, the big major crime that the show is concerned with so far is a case of a kidnapped child that went horribly wrong. And I like how the show really leans into some really startling, brutal, haunting imagery that I was totally not expecting. Because in one of the early scenes of the episode, we see these bereaved parents getting their child back, and their child is already dead, and its eyelids have been stitched shut. It's terrifying stuff. But prior to seeing him investigate that particular case, we have a lot of scenes where Perry Mason, as well as a character by the name of Pete Strickland, played by the great Shea Wiggum, we see them investigate investigating this actor who's clearly modeled on someone like Fatty Arbuckle. And we see them getting all these great pictures of him having wild sex with like food wiped all over him and the girls. It's, per it's pretty gluttonous stuff. And we see that Perry Mason's going to use these images to try to squeeze some money out of the studio that's working with this actor because if these pictures were to get out, it would damage his reputation, damage his movies, damage the studio, etc. So initially, Perry Mason, he's not exactly this strong, moral, upstanding guy. And we see that a lot of the season is going to be all about him trying to figure out what kind of person he wants to be because when sleazy movie producers and their thug enforcers are looking down upon you as beneath contempt, you know you've got some work to do. And his whole blackmail attempt goes horribly wrong where they take the pictures and the negatives and they end up heating up his own gun and branding him on the chest. It's pretty hardcore stuff. And I have to say on the whole, I did enjoy the episode. I just didn't love the episode. There are a lot of really interesting details that really help just define who this character is. There's this great early scene where Perry Mason's at a morgue and he's bribing the mortician to buy clothes off of dead people to replace to replace his attire that has mustard stains and that sort of thing on it. When you're stealing clothes from the dead, you've reached a new low. And we see him having these wild scenes where, he have, where he's having really detached sex with this prostitute, where he's almost kind of looking away with this vacant expression and just kind of sliding down the side of the bed. But the overall effect was pretty comedic. 
And when it comes to this kidnap baby plot, there seems to be a hell of a lot more that we haven't learned yet. I mean, obviously, I think this is going to be the main crime that occupies our attention throughout most of this first season. But it involves this giant religious organization. And the circumstances by which the baby was kidnapped originally seem incredibly suspicious. But as Perry Mason starts to investigate, it brings him into contact with some really rough cops. And I think some of these cops are borderline psycho, whereas others are just kind of run-of-the-mill corrupt. But in the strongest action scene this episode, we see one of these psycho cops hunting down the three men who kidnapped the baby. And in a really riveting shootout, takes him out and chases one who falls off the roof. But at that point, I kind of sat up and realized that the show might have some serious potential. And when speaking about the period setting, I have to admit, I am intrigued. I'm a massive fan of old school Hollywood, 20s, 30s, and 40s. But perhaps the background scores, it's a little old fashioned. It's almost like generic background jazz music that just feels a little bit too on the nose for this kind of investigative crime show. But overall, the show looks absolutely fantastic. It's very stylish, very atmospheric. In particular, in particular, this really interesting sequence during the closing credits. And I think this show is going to have a lot of heart and soul as well because as damaged as Perry Mason might be and as haunted as he might be, we do see a glimmer of life still in his eyes. When he first sees the kidnapped baby on the slab and he's taking pictures of it, it pushes in for a close-up on his face. And you see that it's really having a massive impact on him. And it's through this case that perhaps he might redeem himself and discover some new sense of purpose in life. So as I said before, I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I'm not completely sold. I don't think it's a slam dunk, home run, whatever metaphor you want to use. But I think if you're a fan of crime shows, particularly old-fashioned crime shows, at a minimum, the show is worth a look. I think for people who enjoy old-fashioned film noir and horrible detective stories from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, this is absolutely going to be their bread and butter. But I think that's all I have to say for now. But I'll definitely be back next week to give you my evolving opinions and views on this show. But if you enjoyed this review, please consider subscribing to this channel, liking the video, hitting that notification bell. If you want to talk more about Perry Mason or clue me in on the rich history of the character, definitely help me down on Twitter at Colrex or just leave me a comment in the comments below. But can't thank you enough for watching this video. I really appreciate it. But I hope everyone has a great week. But more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.